Hello, Chicago. Welcome on in to another episode of Shy Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Lots to be getting into tonight, lots that we'll be going through. Of course, we will be talking NFL playoffs. We have a Super Bowl matchup, the Chiefs and the Niners. What can the Bears take away from from such a pairing? They played a couple of those teams this, they played a couple of the teams that played yesterday, this past season. What can we learn from that? What can we take away? Anything? Plus, they've got some new coaches on the staff. We will meet the new quarterback coach. We will meet the new defensive coordinator. We'll see what we think of those hires. Then, we've also got the Bulls and the Blackhawks over at the United Center. They are basically at the midway point of their seasons. The the NHL is just about at its all-star break. The Blackhawks are done until the all-star break rolls around. The Bulls have got a little bit more time before they hit their break, but they're just about there. How are those guys looking? What might we expect from them the rest of the way? Who might be coming in? Who might be leaving? And we've got a new play-by-play voice in town that we will get to meet this spring and summer. All that and more coming up right now on Chi-Town Weekly. Do not go anywhere. Buckle it on up. Let's go. And hello and good evening, everyone. Once again, I am your host, Adam Karnick. Glad that you are here with me tonight for another episode of Shy town Weekly. Lots to get into, lots to go through tonight on the show, so we will get right down to business as we go here. And of course, we as we start off every show, we do want to let you know that this show plus all the shows on the network are brought to you by planet jerky premium brisket beef jerky planet jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 california league champion lake elsinore storm the single a affiliate of the san diego padres this all brisket jerky has gluten-free options contains no msg no sodium nitrate is low in sugar and high in protein. This is some of the best jerky you can get your hands on. Visit them at planetjerky.net to place your order. They offer free shipping on all orders of $50 and above. And regardless of what your taste buds are, they've got something there for you in awesomely cool packaging with informational on you know educational information on the back of it too about the different planets how they got their names things like that so all kinds of cool stuff there check them out planetjerky.net planet jerky premium brisket beef jerky the jerky that's on a whole other planet for the last nine and a half years now, IE Sports Radio has brought you amazing content, ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, coaches, and other authorized media personnel to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Make sure to follow us at IE Sports Radio on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to keep up with the latest in sports and with our shows. Also, check out our daily updated website, iesportsradio.com, for sports news, the IE Sports Radio blog, our Hall of Fame, Fans of the Month, and pages dedicated to each podcast, our IE Sports Radio community forum, and stop by the shop to check out the merchandise. Thank you for making IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. You heard how to follow along with the station on social media. You can also follow along with this show on Twitter. We are at IESRC, or you can follow along with me personally on Twitter. I am at Adam underscore Karnick. And if you are listening live here on this Monday, January 29th, the final Monday in January already. Wow. Wow. We are just flying along here this new year, not wasting any time having things going on. If you are listening live here tonight, you can you can hop on into the chat room on Spreaker. 
jump into the chat room. Hello, Taryn. Hello, Ralph. Good evening, gentlemen. I, I hope to have an excellent show for you in store tonight. Hop on in and we can interact and have some fun back and forth that way. Or if you're listening later on in the week as a podcast, whether it's here on Spreaker or Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever YouTube, wherever you're finding the content, thank you for being here. We really do appreciate your time and appreciate you making this part of your sports week. I really do appreciate that. So we're going to be bouncing around a few different areas tonight. I do, of course, want to talk some football, both uh, what happened yesterday. We now have we now have the Super Bowl set for Super Bowl 58. Want to talk about that a little bit. The Bears made some hires. We want to talk about that. But we're also going to bounce around a little bit, talk some Bulls and some Blackhawks tonight, as well as take a look a little bit in the peak at the upcoming baseball season as well, a little bit before we're done here tonight. So let's start things off. Let's let's dive in and let's start things off with the NFL. First of all, we've got, of course, our Super Bowl is set. The Detroit Lions... Did not make history yesterday. They they finished short. I can't say I am super surprised. That was a that was going to be a tough one for the Lions to win. They were they shocked everybody by jumping out to a lead after after thirty minutes. You know, a twenty one point lead in the first half before finally succumbing to the Niners. You know, unfortunately, the game is sixty minutes. And then over in the AFC side, the Chiefs just their defense, you know, that, you know, everybody's, of course, rightfully going to talk about Patrick Mahomes and everything going on. There's Bishop jumps in. He's all excited because, of course, his Chiefs are in the Super Bowl again. So he's excited. Uh, Bishop, I, I have to ask, and maybe somebody asked you this in your show earlier today, and, and this is KC Sports. Does it get boring going to the Super Bowl four times in five years? I, I have to legitimately ask that question as, as Bishop is getting to celebrate being in the Super Bowl yet again. You know, everybody's going to rightfully and and understandably talk about Patrick Mahomes and that final pass to uh, Valdez Scandling there to seal the win. But that offense didn't score for the entire second half. It was that defense by the Chiefs that allowed them to make the Super Bowl, holding Baltimore to just 10 points, uh, getting two takeaways inside the red zone, inside the end zone even there against Baltimore. That was impressive by Kansas City's defense, and that's what allowed them to... That that's really what allowed them to make the Super Bowl. So I want to react to both of those games a little bit, and then we'll take a look at kind of the Bears side of things here, and we'll and we'll dive into the Bears news. Uh, first of all, you know the the four teams that played yesterday. The Bears played three games this season against those four teams. Uh, their their one victory against a playoff team came against Detroit. Earlier this earlier this season, the Bears actually line up really well against the Lions for as much talk as there is, rightfully so, of how good of a season Detroit had and how big of steps they took all throughout the season. The Bears actually line up really well against them. They beat them in Chicago and had every opportunity to beat them in Detroit before blowing that game unfortunately uh the game against the chiefs eh, not quite so much that uh ugh, that was a mis- that was a miserable game that was a that was a i mean literally fox took that game and said never mind we're we're no longer giving this national exposure we're gonna we're gonna crank this down to just the local markets only sorry folks um on that one is it got to like 41 to nothing, as I remember correctly. And Bishop in the chat room here saying he and his wife were just talking earlier about how they're wondering if Mahomes is ever going to get bored. I mean, yeah, it's six straight seasons of making the AFC title game 
and you know, four of the last five years, he's made it to the Super Bowl. I, I, I hope someday to get to enjoy that level of boredom. To oh hum, we made the Super Bowl again. Oh well, okay, we'll get you know we'll get excited in a couple of weeks. You know this this isn't anything yet. I yearn for that to be boring. You know, I, I, I envy you in that regard, Bishop. I, I definitely am envious there that, that a trip to the Super Bowl has almost become routine for the Chiefs. And then the Bears will be getting a look at San Francisco next season. They'll be getting an up-close and personal look at Brock Purdy and what that offense is and what Christian McCaffrey is with the Niners and it's going to be out in San Francisco. The Bears haven't played out in San Francisco in uh since the 2018 season, so a rare trip out to Santa Clara next season for the Bears. So they'll have uh in fact, if if the Niners win in the Super Bowl, it could be Bears Niners to open the season next fall. That could be the kickoff game depending on how how everything goes, you know, if the Bears say, for example, were to draft a quarterback that uh, played his college ball in California and had some expectations there of being the next great quarterback, I could see NBC saying, oh, yeah, Bears, Niners. Yeah, that's a that's a worthy game to kick off the season. So we could be looking at something like that here for the future for for the Bears. As for the Ravens, uh, they're the they're the odd team out there for the Bears. Uh, don't have they didn't play them this season. They played them last year. That doesn't really have any. Or was it last year? Or, no, it was a couple of years ago. Uh, they they played them. Doesn't really have any bearing on this part on this particular season. So, uh, uh, and they won't see them again for a little bit. So, not a huge you know nothing nothing huge there other than simply. I am still a Justin Fields fan. I, I, if the Bears decide to stick with Fields and say, look, you know, Lamar Jackson is going to win league MVP, that we think we have that as a quarterback, I'm, I'm not going to complain. I'm, I'm still not going to complain if, if they decide that Fields is the way to go. I know the last few weeks I have done a lot of, hard conversations on what I think Justin Fields is at this point in his career, that he is absolutely not a finished product, but it's, but I've also wanted to kind of point out to people that look it, he's only 24. And if you, and, and you see Lamar Jackson, I, I do think that, Justin Fields can be that and more. So if you want to point to that and say, hey, Lamar Jackson is a a two-time MVP and we've got a guy that can do a lot of those things that he can do and he's only 24 years old, he hasn't hit his ceiling yet, I hear you. I'm with you. Um, it's, It's simply... He's got... He's got three years of a body of work build built up and the results, especially this last season, there were alarming statistics. So I'd understand if they decide that, you know what? We kept him for a season. Now it's time to cut bait. Now it's time to move on. I, I would get that. But, but even though I've been doing a lot of that kind of talk for the last couple of weeks, don't take it the wrong way I would still love for Justin Fields to remain the guy in Chicago and take that next step I'd love it and and Bishop points out in the chat you know that you know the Bears are in a great position here with the draft if they choose to stick with Fields man the haul that potentially you could get for the number one overall pick I'm going to dive into that in a little later of an episode we're too we're too early in the off season at this point to really 
have a feel for what could you get for that number one overall pick, it's still too early. Uh, you know, you still have the Super Bowl to be played for the for the Lions and the Ravens. The offseason literally just began today. So teams are still working on getting themselves into that mode. The Bears have kind of been fortunate in that they've known for about a month that, hey, we're going to have the number one overall pick. And, and they knew they were going to have a high pick for that first one. So they've had the advantage of being able to do a little extra digging on that already. But the rest of the league will, here within the next two or three weeks, be catching up to where the Bears have been as far as, as offseason analysis is concerned and draft prep. And will be able to get a better idea of what realistically could they look at getting in a draft. So I know there's people out there who are, oh, the haul that they could get, you know, could be bigger than they got last year, and and this, that, or the other thing, and uh, and it's all possible. It's all very possibly true. I'm not going to tell you that it, it's impossible for any of that to be right, but it's it, there's a lot more guesswork going on with it than than educated, sourced news with it. Drewski asking here, do I still believe in fields? <sighs> I, <laughs> it's such a hard question. I've talked over the last couple weeks about how th- his numbers, especially in the fourth quarter this past season, were horrible. I mean, he went from completing 75% of his passes in the first quarter to barely completing half of his passes in the fourth quarter to two-thirds of his interception. I know, that was a very long pause. Two-thirds of his interceptions this past season came in the fourth quarter. Again, you know, he threw six interceptions against just three touchdowns in the fourth quarter of the season. That's that's two to one in the opposite direction that you want the ratio to be. At the same time, he's 24. He's not even 25 years old yet. He'll be 25 by the time the next season turns around. I refuse to believe that at 25 years old, he cannot improve. That it that it's it's literally impossible for a twenty five year old to get any better. I refuse to believe that. So I believe that Justin Fields is not there yet. I still believe that he could get there. It's just at this point. The data and also years of NFL history would tell us he would be bucking tradition. He would be he would be an outlier if he were to do it, if he were to be able to take the next step. That with as many starts as he has under his belt. And the, the the numbers he's put up in those in those starts, he could have significant improvement and still not be there. So he's got a long way to go. But he he makes the special plays look so special. Good evening, Wes. Good to see you, sir. Hope you're doing well on this Monday evening. So that's where I'm at on fields. But some, there was a hire that the Bears made this past week that's potentially going to help him out. We talked last week about the new offensive coordinator that the Bears hired, Shane Waldron. Well, Waldron made the biggest hire to fill out his staff this past week. And there's, we're going to talk about two new Bears coaches tonight, and then I'm going to preface this that by saying 
We're going to take a break from talking about Bears coaches for a little while. Not that I don't care about the wide receiver coach. Not that the the running back coach isn't important. Not that, not that these other staff positions aren't important and don't carry relevance. I just feel like from an audience standpoint, talking about the quarterback coach and talking about the defensive coordinator... That's something that, from an audience standpoint, yeah, we're going to latch on to. You get into some of the other staff positions, and it's kind of a, can we talk about something else, please? Can we move on to a new subject, please? So, we're going to talk coaches tonight, but then we'll be taking a little break from that going forward. So, we've got two new coaches to talk about tonight. We're going to start on the offensive side of the ball. Arguably the most important position in the offensive coaching staff outside of the offensive coordinator, is the quarterback coach. And the Bears had gotten rid of Andrew Janoco after this past season. They've got their new quarterback coach. Kerry Joseph comes over, also from Seattle. Worked with Shane Waldron most recently with the Seahawks. He's been the assistant quarterback coach for the last two seasons under Waldron. He's got a little bit of an of an interesting path here. He played in the NFL as a safety with, I believe it was the New York Jets. He then went up to Canada and played in the Canadian Football League and was a quarterback up there in the Canadian Football League. And he was a runner. He ran for over 5,000 yards in Canada as a quarterback. Obviously, it's a little bit different of a league up there. It's a little bit different of a game. It's a bit more wide open of a game up in Canada. By the by, if you've not ever watched a Canadian football league game over the summer, check it out. Scratch that itch. You know, I know here in the States, we keep trying to make the USFL or the XFL or the USXFSS, whatever they're going to call it this year, make that work. Check out the CFL. It's a pretty cool product. I would I would endorse that. Pick, pick that out. Check that out. He then, after his playing days were done, he was in New Orleans as a training camp intern in 2014, then uh, was promoted to co-offensive coordinator and, or excuse me, Became co-offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach at McNeese State. Um, bounced around with some different places. And then ultimately came to Seattle. Has been there the last the last couple of years. An interesting hire. Definitely with the mobility. With the, the time playing both defense and offense. Including quarterback. That's going to lend a unique perspective to how to look at the quarterback position for for Justin Fields. I mean, let's face it, this is, yes, you're working with all the quarterbacks. He's going to be working with Tyson Bajan also. But let's face it, Fields or the draft pick, whoever it is, that's going to be his primary focus, his primary job is going to be to help, uh, to help get that, person along to get that person up to speed as quickly as possible that's a unique hire i i'm curious to see how that one works out uh some interesting history there just the fact that he played safety and quarterback at a professional level that's a a very unique perspective to bring to the coaching job so that's that's going to be very interesting to see how that goes And then on the other side, the Bears have a defensive coordinator now. They've been without one since early October. They they reached out to and brought in actually somebody who served with the Bears before. Eric Washington comes in and is the new defensive coordinator for the Bears. Uh, Served under Lovey Smith and Ron Rivera during their time together here in Chicago, was a defensive line coach. Actually then followed Rivera when Rivera left Chicago, uh, ultimately wound up coaching under Rivera's staff when Rivera took over in Carolina. 
and eventually was promoted to defensive coordinator before before then going to Buffalo and uh, and then becoming the assistant head coach and defensive line coach. I see Wes is very excited about Eric Washington. I'm ex- I'm excited about it in that you know that he knows the cover two very well. He had two excellent, excellent pupils in Lovey Smith and then Ron Rivera in how to run a cover two and understand how it's supposed to work. Um, I was given a very interesting scouting report on him from Patty Bax, the host of the Buffalo Huddle, on Tuesday nights here on on IE Sports Radio. Uh, she didn't want to go into a bunch of details, but but uh, she cautioned with him that uh, Washington has been known to play favorites in the in the past with his defense. So that's something to keep an eye on. But one of the things that's very interesting with Washington with the Washington hire is he has experience being a defensive coordinator without being a defensive play caller because Matt Eberflus is still going to be calling the plays. He's going to be calling the defensive formations and the defensive fronts for the Bears this coming season. He's going to maintain, he's going to retain that responsibility on game days. So Washington's job is more going to be to handle the Monday to Saturday business of running the defense. And then uh, Eberflus will be the one with the play call sheet calling the actual formations for the defense on game day and calling the, the blitz packages or what have you throughout the game day. Drewski asks an excellent question here in the chat. How much time will this coaching staff be given this season? It It, it is going to be... This season or bust, I think, for Eberflus. That it's, this will be year three. You had the tear down year. You had the build it up year. And and now it's the, it's time to make the playoffs. It's time to make this happen. You've had the number one overall pick two years in a row. Uh, you have, you've had the opportunities to mold this team into your liking. We'll see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the defensive line. Uh, it's Pickens and, and Dexter, Javon Dexter, um, hopefully making jumps. The Bears still need, in my estimation, we'll get into this this offseason, they still need a true three technique. Javon Dexter made some some major strides later in the season. I would still like to see them make an upgrade at that position this off season. Uh, we'll we'll get into some of the draft stuff later. There is a prospect out of Illinois that uh, certainly should be there at nine, and could perhaps be somebody that the Bears might wind up targeting with a trade back a little bit, even with their number nine pick. There, I would love to see that because this defense needs to have a superstar at the three technique in order to make it work. You, you've got to have Tommy Harris. You've got to have, uh, you've, you've got to have Warren Sapp. If we're going back way too many years now, I'm trying to think of a, a slightly more, um, within the last five or six years name, but, um, uh, I don't know if the Lions or Packers' recent success necessarily contributes to the Bears being in the hot seat. It definitely makes the job harder. I'll put it that way. That uh, if there was a year to take a hold of this division, you'd have thought it would have been this season. And the Bears proved that they weren't ready to do that. So the fact that the Lions and the Packers both seemingly leapfrogged you it is going to make it harder um at the same time i have heard i have heard people prognosticate that the nfc north could be set up if if the cards get played correctly this offseason that 
the NFC North could become the new division, certainly in the NFC, where that's that's where the dog fights happen. That that's where it's man. That that's who that's where the king of the NFC came out of. That the NFC East could be in a little bit of a decline. The NFC West we've already seen as a division take a step back and the NFC South who the hell nobody knows who's any good in the NFC South the NFC South doesn't know who's good in the NFC South you know they're 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 kings of mediocrity in the NFC South so if it it feels like unfortunately the Packers have found another quarterback (laughs) makes me mad if the Lions have shown that this wasn't a fluke and if the Bears can take Another step, you know, I Wayne Larravee, the the Packers radio voice, even said he feels that the Bears are about a year behind where the Lions were, that the Bears are, are ready to take the jump that the Lions took this past season. If all that comes into play, then the NFC North could be the NFC division to watch for years to come here. Yeah, Mike, I saw that prediction, too, that Chase Young... Uh, didn't quite hasn't quite worked out in San Francisco the way that they thought when they made that trade, and so Young coming to Chicago in free agency to once again pair with Montez Sweat. I I'm not gonna say no to that. Yeah, you know, hey, it seemed to work awfully well in Washington. That the Bears need more of a pass rush. So there's there's good things going on there. So the Bears now, Eberflus is staying. They he's locked in. We've got the offensive coordinator in Shane Waldron. Shane Waldron has hired his off- his quarterback's coach in Kerry Joseph. And Eberflus has hired his defensive coordinator now in Eric Washington. The, the major important pieces of the staff are set. They are now ready to dive headlong into the offseason and begin the nitty-gritty work that hopefully... Uh, will be the signs of things to come for a great upcoming season. There's a couple other teams in town, though, that are currently at the midway point of their seasons that are doing some reflecting and trying to figure out what's going to be coming up next for them. And I want to talk about both of them. We're going to go a trip out to the Madhouse on Madison next. Check in on the tenants there at United Center right after this quick break. You are listening to Chi-Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. What's good, everyone? It's Drewski, the host of Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. On this station, we cover everything in the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area, from where we cover the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Stars, Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Wings, Texas Rangers, TCU, SMU, we cover it all right here every Wednesdays from 9 to 10 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you stay live with me on the Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports.
Cleveland and Columbus sports fans. This is Jen D, host of the Show of the Land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. If you love Cleveland and Columbus sports like I do, be sure to tune in live to the Show of the Land on Tuesdays, where we will cover the Cleveland Browns, Cavs, Guardians, and Monsters. We will also talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets, Crew, Fury, and of course, the Ohio State Buckeyes. We'll also cover other colleges in the area like Akron, Kent State, Cleveland State, Mount Union, John Carroll, Baldwin Wallace, Youngstown State, among others. So like I said, if you love Cleveland and Columbus sports like I do, be sure to tune in Tuesdays to the Show of the Land with Jen B on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, sports fans. Are you in the market for Florida sports or just keeping up with the latest in the panhandle? Palm Tree Sports is a dedicated audio hub to all things sports in the Sunshine State. We cover current events, big news, heavily favored opinions all across the NFL, NBA, MLB, and so much more. So come check us out every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a down south education on Florida sports and athletics. It's hosted by yours truly, Corey Pujols, and is powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, New York? This is Ricky K coming at you at the NY State of Sports, a new show here on High East Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Listen to me every Thursday afternoon as we bring you the latest takes on the Yankees, Mets, Jets, Giants, Knicks, Nets, Rangers, Devils, and Islanders. Plus, you get some college hoops and what's the local sports events going on in the area. It's a state that never sleeps, so why not get the opinions and sports takes that never sleep? Again, every Thursday, 2 p.m. to the NY State of Sports. We'll see you then. What is up, Carolina Nation? This is John Felipe of the Carolina Cast, of course, the podcast of, by, and for the Carolinas, right here on IE Sports, your direct feed for all that is sports. And I'm reminding you to tune in Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern for the latest in Carolina sports, whether it's the Panthers that keep on pounding, the fly natures of the Hornets, the storming hurricanes, the battle of the Blues with Duke and UNC, the fight of the Clemson Tigers, or the amazing atmosphere of any Carolina college. I'm talking App State. I'm talking ECU. I've got you covered. Once again, tune in for the Carolina cast with me, John Felipe, Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all. That is sports. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We're going to go out west a little bit now, just a little bit out west of downtown, head out to the Madhouse on Madison. The Bulls played, well, they played out in Portland last night. 
but they got a much needed win over the Trailblazers last night, winning in Portland 104 to 96. DeMar DeRozan, 20 points on 8 of 14 shooting, paced the Bulls on the night. Uh, some other notable some other notables from the game. Kobe White, 15 points for him. Nikola Vucevic, 14 points. Just seven rebounds for Vuce on the game there. Andre Drummond also off the bench. 15 points and seven boards. The Bulls, it snapped a two-game winning streak to put them at 22 and 25 on the season. As we sit here right now, just about the end of January, they've got the trade deadline coming up next week. So, where what do we what do we think of the Bulls right now? Well, they're in ninth place in the Eastern Conference. They would just barely be in the pseudo playoff bubble the the play in tournament to you know to get into the playoffs there is there for is there for the bulls the feeling still is they're probably as we get close to the trade deadline they're still looking to try to to move zach levine and we're seeing some other names that have popped up i've seen tory craig's name come up on the on the trade on the trade market on the trade deadline there We've seen, uh, I saw one earlier today, Andre Drummond has been playing so well, especially while Vucevic was hurt, that Drummond could be on the trade block. The Bulls could look at getting some some trade pieces there. I would be just fine with the Bulls selling what they can. Maybe maybe hang on to Kobe White, maybe hang on to Io Dosunmu, but... Realistically, with the Bulls, I am okay with them moving on from anybody and everybody. That if they can move them, great, do it. You need you need assets, you need draft picks, you need to somehow reset and restart with this team. It's they've got they've got a ter- I've, I've said this a lot about the Bulls this season. They've got a terrific collection of individual players of individual talent. It just hasn't worked as a team with them right now um you know demar derozan and zach levine are kind of extreme examples levine has figured out kind of how to 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 work with the other guys better this season but he's still it seems like those two guys would be better off on separate rosters not that they can't get along with each other and 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 operate you know on a personal level but it just seems from a basketball perspective they just need to be on different rosters with each other and Vucevic also you know, Vucevic I, he just signed an extension this offseason so I, I, I would think moving him would be really hard to do but you know if you if you could get something for him I would have no problem with that with this team I still I still feel like there's so much work to be done to to catch up to even even with somebody like Indiana who you know is right now on the cusp of of making the playoffs they're the 6th seed right now you've got so much work to do to catch up to somebody like that that I'd be okay with them doing a tear down trying to get some trade pieces trying to get some things there with that team, with those assets, and try to to do a little bit more of a true rebuild rather than what they've kind of done, which is which is kind of rebuild on the fly real quickly. There, the other team in the United Center, the Blackhawks. Woo! Oh boy! I mean, they've been. <laughs> we we knew this season was going to be rough. We knew that this season was going to be. All about the Connor Bedard show, but ugh, 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 ugh. the Blackhawks are on a a bit of are on a road trip. They've completed a West Coast trip. The last three games out in Seattle, then Edmonton and Calgary. Um, they scored all of two goals in those three games, and both of those came last week. 
Their last two games, they were shut out against Edmonton and then shut out against Calgary. They have now dropped their last 20 road games. That is a franchise record for futility on the road. 0-19-1 in their last 20 road games. One point in their last 20 road games. Yuck. That's brutal. That's just awful, 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 awful. They actually started off okay on the road this season. They were, you know, they started off four, four and three on the road to start the season, and now they've, uh, or excuse me, four, four and four and four, and now they've they've gone this o o nineteen and one stretch where they're just playing miserable hockey on the road. They are squarely in last place in the central. They did just give a new contract to Peter Morazic, their their goaltender. Morazic has had has had a very solid season in net for the Hawks. I mean, they they've had to lean on him because uh because Soderblom uh, Arvid Soderblom has been terrible in net. Soderblom has just been, you put him in net and you just, you accept that it's going to be a loss in that game. That you're just, you're going to lose that one and let's just move on. That's how bad Soderblom has been this season. Giving up over four goals a night on average and only saving 87% of the shots he's faced. Morazic, meanwhile, obviously not a winning record because... The Hawks don't have a winning record. They don't have much good stuff in front of him. But a goals against the average of below three, a save percentage above 90%. He's right at 91%, 9-10 save average. He has been playing very good hockey for the Hawks this season. So good to see him, uh, that they've got him in line for the next couple of years at least, that they've they've got s- some good goal playing in front of him, that they've got some good goal playing on the team and it's not a it's not a super high money deal I don't think either I'm pulling up the 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 exact deal here no it's a it's a two-year deal that runs through the 25-26 season and it's four and a quarter million a year on uh on average so so you know good stuff there they've got a couple of small things here and there but by and large the team the team is struggling you know the the team as a whole is struggling and it's to be expected and especially with Connor Bedard out still for the the next couple of weeks at least and he hasn't you know Bedard hasn't played his last game his last game was back on you know January 5th was when he got hurt so it's been three and a half weeks. He's still leading the team in points. He's still leading the teams in goals. He's still leading the team in assists. You know, he he is the offense. Uh, now to be to be fair, uh, Jason Dickinson has come up and tied him at least in goals. And uh, Kurashev, Philip Kurashev, is only a couple of assists behind. But it's still just it's Bedard. It's it's Connor Bedard this season and a little bit of Nick Felino and and a little bit of Peter Morazic but uh, it is it is the Connor Bedard show and then anybody else that can maybe flash for a little bit there there with them but I would expect for the Hawks I their now their trade deadline they're off now through the All Star break the All Star break is coming up in the NHL here in about a week. I believe is where is where we're at at this point um, for the the All Star break. No, the All Star break is this is this coming weekend. So we've only got we've only got a, a few games left overall in the entire league. There's there's one tonight, a couple tomorrow, and a a, a couple on Wednesday, and then we are full on All Star break mode here for the entire NHL. So the Hawks are off now. Their next their next game is uh, they are off all the way till next Wednesday the seventh. So they've got a nice little stretch here where they can they can rest up, they can relax a little bit, they can 
get healthy. They still have seven players on injured reserve. Hopefully they can get some of those guys off of the injured list and, and back into playing and, and, and get some good things there. But it's still a ways to go for the Hawks. I, I still wouldn't be surprised to see them make some moves to try to try to get some extra draft picks. They do have a decent amount of draft capital. I think they've got seven picks in the first three rounds of this upcoming of this summer's upcoming draft. So they're not without capital, but uh, we'll see if they can make make some extra. And they've got some guys coming up in the pipeline that are that are playing well. Some some guys coming up both collegiately and uh, in their minor league system that are that are doing some good things. So hopefully we'll see some some things for them uh, next season. But for right now, it's still a, a rough stretch for the Hawks. All right, we are going to take a very fast break, and then we've got one more. I, we did some introduction at the beginning of the show, learning about some new coaches. We've got a new play-by-play man to learn about. We're going to do one more quick break, and then the White Sox have a new tele, a new voice for television that we will learn about. You are listening to Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. What's up, Pittsburgh? This is Ralph Galise, the host of the Injury Board on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all letter sports. Are you that passionate die-on Steelers, Penguins, Pirates, or just a Pittsburgh sports fan? Then please join me on the Injury Board every Tuesday on IE Sports Radio, the direct feed for all letter sports, and I will update you on all that's black and gold have you telling your Pittsburgh fans and friends what's up with Pittsburgh sports? Tune in Tuesday with me, Ralph Galise, the user report on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Let's go! IE Sports Radio fans, it's your boy, the SoCal Saint, the host of the premier professional wrestling podcast online today, the IE Elite Wrestling Show. If you're a fan and have a passion for the world of professional wrestling, this is the show for you. I take you inside the ropes with all the athleticism, high-flying, and hard-hitting action, and then we take it backstage with all the backstage drama and backstabbing that goes on in the world of professional wrestling today. If something's going on in the world of professional wrestling, rest assured, the SoCal Saint knows what's going on, and he's going to let you know too. If you're a fan, check us out every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, only on IE Sports Radio. The IE Elite Wrestling Show, your direct feed for all this professional wrestling, on the only network that is your direct feed for all that is sports. Check us out. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Presented to you and brought to you by Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Be sure to check them out, planetjerky.net. They offer free shipping on all orders of $50 and above. I've got a couple bags of the Volcanic Jalapeno in the house right now. It is tasty. You definitely want to check them out, planetjerky.net. Taryn reminding us in the chat he's also the set of the host of set point our volleyball show here on the station he was on earlier today reminding us that the loyal men's volleyball continues to be one of the top programs in the nation they're currently ranked 11th in the most recent coaches poll they're getting ready to take on number 15 ball state down there in muncie indiana coming up here this week thursday night so that should be a, a barn burner of a match there 
to kick off the Midwestern Intercollegiate Volleyball Association conference play. So definitely stay tuned with Set Point Taryn Rodriguez on all things happening there in the volleyball world as we see if the Ramblers can take down Ball State later this week. So the White Sox, of course, they found themselves in need of a new television voice as Jason Benetti left to go do the exact same role with the Detroit Tigers this past, this past season. The White Sox finally made their announcement of who they were who they were going to hire to replace him. John Schriffen comes over from ESPN to become the new voice of the White Sox. He's 39 years old, so a, so a younger guy going to be in the booth, which is excellent, wonderful for, for the Sox. Played baseball collegiately before going into the booth, so has experience there. He was a pitcher in college. And then he's been with ESPN since 2020. He's been calling, he's been doing MLB games on ESPN radio since 2022. He's also worked NCAA basketball, football, baseball, and softball games, as well as he has some experience calling some NBA G League and also some Summer League games. So John Schriffen, welcome to Chicago and we will be sure to get you caught up on everything that you'll need to know for the White Sox. The White Sox themselves also uh, some other news this week. The White Sox announced that finally, starting next January, the Sox Fest will be back starting next winter. It, they haven't had one since January of 2020 before the pandemic. They understandably didn't have one in January of 2021, but then they didn't have one in 2022 or in 2023 for reasons that only the White Sox themselves can explain. But the White Sox did announce that they will have Sox Fest return next summer. So apparently now uh, Jerry Reinsdorf, I guess, has decided that uh, fans will he will be okay with fans booing him in public. So. That is going to do it. For our show here tonight. Woo! That was a busy hour. We got through a lot there in that hour. Thank you again to our sponsor, Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Check them out at planetjerky.net. Planet Jerky, the jerky that's on a whole other planet. Thank you to Mary B., the czar of IE Sports Radio, for all the hard work you do behind the scenes, good sir. Lots going on that I know you have to keep abreast of and, and keep yourself in the loop on. Thank you to everybody that was hanging out in the chat room tonight. Jen B, Taryn Rodriguez, Larry B. It's Drewski. Mike Pat hopped in there. Wes the True Blood. Uh, I believe I saw that Ralph Kalis, Bishop. Lots of people in the chat room here tonight. Thank you everybody for being in here with me tonight live. Finally, thank you you for coming here and listening whether it was live here tonight on monday night or whether you're listening back later on the week as a podcast on Spreaker, iheart radio uh, youtube spotify google play any of the places where you get our content our, our content thank you for being here thank you for making this part of your week whether this was your first show or your 167th show, which uh, if you've done more than that, yeah, that's pretty amazing. And that's all the more I've done. Uh, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And if you like what you heard, share it. Tell people, hey, there's there's this show that this guy does every week on Monday nights. Check it out. I think you'd like what you hear. I, that would mean a ton to me. Please share the show, like the show, help help it grow. 
next week. Uh, there's there's a Super Bowl to be had. We'll be we'll be looking at that from a from a unique Bears perspective. We'll also check out all the other things that are going on around the Chicago sports scene. Some good college stuff, plus some other things happening. Until then, be safe, be healthy. This is Adam Kernick for IU Sports Radio. We'll see you next week.